Hello. Uh, would you mind just, I, I know you have, but then it will be good for the audience uh, to, to know about, a little bit about you, uh, if you could introduce who you are, say, and say your name and say a little bit about yourself. Mm. Hello, my name is Sylvia Grant. I have cerebral palsy, which my disablement hasn't held me back from anything that I have wanted to do in my life. I... Mm. So what do you do at the university? It is a group. Fortnight. Hmm. And within that group, um, I remember you told me you teach people about uh, communication skills. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Things. Disabled. Mm -hmm. People. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. And today um, you want to tell me a little bit about your family. Uh, do, you, do you want to talk about your family now? My story really starts when my mum was dying.
I know that the circumstances were really difficult for all my family at that time. I know that my sister, brother and aunties thought that they were doing the best thing for me, but I felt as that I didn't have much of a say in anything then. I did try to tell my sister and brother how I was feeling, but they just got upset with me and said that I was being selfish. I felt that I wasn't only losing my mum, but my whole world was falling apart and I also felt that I was just being dumped at the care home by everybody. I felt I had not much of a choice or much of a say in my future, but didn't say that to my sister and brother, because I was hurt enough when they said that I was being selfish. I think that they thought I was blaming the bad situation that I was in on my mum, but I wasn't. I just felt frustrated and powerless, because I wasn't getting any say in my future. I tried to contact someone from a disability charity to see if they could help me, but everything was going on so quick then. I was ill at the time so I never really felt that I was consulted. It was after everything had happened and I had moved into the care home that someone from the charity came to see me and as I was already under care, they couldn't do very much to help. I knew that the charity I contacted had a big house where several disabled people live and I knew somebody who lived there and it sounded like a nice place to live, so I asked my social worker at the time could he see if I could put my name down to see if I could get a place there if one came up but he just said that I might have no chance getting a place there, because somebody would get it like me in a similar situation that I was in at the time, so I felt that he wasn't doing anything to help me, which I thought that he should have. I knew that I was in trouble here a few weeks after I came to stay at the care home, because one of the senior support workers said to another support worker that she has a personality meaning me and I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself, it doesn't matter what you are, if you are disabled or not everyone has a personality. I thought it was so wrong for them to say that when they worked with disabled people. I can't think of any way to put this nicely. The very first day that I stayed in the care home I felt like I was in a madhouse. I think it was because at school we were mostly just physically disabled children without any other issues, but on my first day, a neighbor with learning difficulties and behavior issues really kicked off and as I wasn't used to that and I really found it hard to deal with. I never really knew how to deal with it and it was hard for me to just shut it out of my mind, because I couldn't get away from of what was happening as I was in the opposite room. It got so bad sometimes that I thought I could not bear it anymore. I thought about asking to move as I felt it would have made life easier for me and them as well. I dreaded some weekends as there had been many more issues with staff. From the start, I have had many concerns about the care that other service users and I receive, and I have tried to raise my concerns social work and with the management of the care home on numerous occasions, and I also have said to them that I am unhappy living here on numerous occasions as well, but I feel that they aren't really listening to me. I also have complained about my care here to the head offices in Edinburgh and London and to the care commission and later on to the care inspectorate, but I felt that they didn't really listen to me either. Do you know why they chose not to ask you? No. You believe that if your family had asked you what you wanted, you would have got better care? Yes. I mean, your message is, it's not just enough to talk to the family members, they actually need to talk to the actual person. You believe that if you weren't disabled, the service providers would have listened to you more. Um, but they listen to your family because 
you are disabled. Mm -hmm. And do you want to tell me about the decisions that you have made for yourself recently? change my care provider You interviewed six care providers yourself, and yes, and and you chose the best care provider. Yeah, and you're going to be managing your own money, so you will be their employer. Yes, yeah, and you're very happy about that because now you feel you are in control of your own life. So, is there anything you want to tell the audience? A key message? What is the key message that you want to tell them when they are working with people with disabilities? Listen. very much for your time and I think there might be people uh, after watching this clip want to talk to you and um, so I will just say goodbye for now yeah okay. thank you <laughs>